All right, to work on the animation portion of the walking sequence, I've given you a little bit of a cheat sheet that you can look at in order to know the poses and positions of your, uh, your character's different body parts as he's walking. In order to import this cheat sheet, let's go to our timeline and create a new layer. And let's put this layer below all of the other ones and double click to rename it walking sequence. S-E-Q-U, good sequence. Now this layer is really just meant to be a guide layer, so we really won't be using it for anything else. We'll delete it later. So with it selected, go to File, Import, and let's just import it to the stage. We'll select the walking sequence GIF, and again, you can see the different positions that we're going to put our character into as he's walking. We'll choose Open, and then move him so that we can see both our, our character and the different walking sequences. Now to make this easier for you, let's get a little idea of what's going on for these different walking positions. There's nine different positions total throughout this entire sequence. And each one of the positions, I want it to take up two frames. So there's going to be 18 frames all together. As it's moving, it's going to start off in this basic contact position. Basically, both of the feet are in contact with the floor. And as he's walking, he's going to go to the second contact position, where both the feet are in, in contact with the floor. They're just swapped up. So the front is in the back, and what started off in the back is now in the front. Same way for the hands as they sway back and forth. And then finally, it's going to return back to its original contact position. Once it's at the original state, then the cycle will repeat again, and so it looks like he's infinitely walking over and over again. Now, to set up the position of our character, we want to make this simple and try not to animate all the different body parts at once. Instead, let's just focus on the different parts as they, uh, they, they relate to each other, mainly the body and the head, the arms, and then finally the feet. If you try to do all the parts at the same time, you'll get very confused and usually you won't get the best results. So the first thing we're gonna do is just animate the head and the body so that it moves naturally. If you look at our walking sequence, the head and the body tend to go, go up and down as the character's walking. This is because the as he's moving, his knees are bending and his leg is stretching and pushing away. And so this mimics the natural walking sequence a normal person would do. We don't walk in a normal straight line. Our eyes move up and down as we walk. And so we want our character to have that natural up and down ebb and flow as well. So let's go back to our timeline. We'll drag it out so we can see him. Again, this is going to take up um, uh, 18 frames total. And so the last frame that we have was actually going to end on frame number 17 because 17 and 18 are going to be the exact same thing. We're going to deal with just the head and the body first. So I'm going to turn off visibility for my arms and my legs. So I, all I'm seeing is just my head and my body. I'm on my walk sequence layer. And let's go ahead and put out a keyframe at frame number 18. So there's one there, so it'll show up. And let's put a keyframe on frame number 18 for the body and also one for the head. And this will just kind of be the natural ending position. Going back to frame number one, I'm going to select the head layer. Let's go to insert and let's use a basic motion tween for this one. Then we'll select the body layer and we'll do a basic motion tween for him. Now all we have to do is to move our body in the position that it needs to be, and it'll create the motion for us. So the next thing we'll do, let's move our frame over. Since we want this to be two frames, move our timeline to the third frame. Let's select both the body, hold down shift, and the head, and we're going to move it down and then up. So here it is. I'm going to hold down the shift key. Use your arrow keys to nudge it down two positions. There's one, two. And this is the recoil. This is the lowest stage where the knees are nice and bent. So he's gone down two positions. Next, 
We'll go over on our timeline two more. One, two, we're on frame number five. Select your head and the body. Let's go up one. Holding down shift, I hit the up key. This is the passing. Now let's go back to our timeline. Go over two more, one, two. We're on frame number seven. Select both the head and the body. Hold down shift. Let's go up one more. Now we're at our, actually let's go up two more. There's the highest point. More for the high point. And then finally let's go over two more. One, two. I'm on the frame number nine. Select both the head and the body. Let's hit the down key one more to go back to our original starting position. So if I was to play this now, this is what it would look like. It's kind of walking back and forth, up and down, up and down. What we're at now is our second contact position. And we can repeat this process over again. So in our timeline, go over two frames. One, two. I'm on frame number 14. Select the head and the body. We're going to go down two, one, two. Go over to the timeline, move over two frames, one, two. Select the head and the body, we're gonna go up one. So now we're in the passing. Let's do the recoil, the highest, excuse me, the highest point. So we're gonna go over two more, one, two. We're on frame number 15, get the head and the body. Let's go up two more, one, two. And then finally, we'll go over to frame number 17, select the head and the body. Let's go down one, right there. And that should put us back to our original starting position. So now if we were to play this, you can see he moves up and down very, very nicely. Pay no attention to this walking sequence. We can actually turn that off. Let's turn on looping and see what it looks like. Pretty good. He looks like he's just kind of normally walking by himself. Okay, let's do the whole thing. There we go. Okay, now that we've got the head and the body moving up and down, let's start to animate the arms and the legs next. We'll turn on visibility for our walking sequence. Go back to frame number one, and let's see if we can see our contact position for the arms. <clears throat> turn on the front arm, and also turn on the back arm. The starting position for the front contact arm, so I'm going to choose front arm. The shoulders need to be moved forward just a little bit. I've selected the layer, so all three of these are selected. And I'm just going to move, using my arrow keys, <clears throat> nudge him to the right just a little bit. Not all the way to the other side of his body, just forward towards the center of his body right there. And then I'm going to click on the hand, and let's drag him around, kind of bend his elbow in his arm up. Let's actually bring his forearm up right about there. That looks pretty good. So there's a good contact position for the front arm. Let's choose the back arm. This one has the shoulders back a little bit, so with the layer selected, we're going to nudge it back some. Then we're going to select the hand, drag it back, Kind of bend it in right about there. I think that's pretty good. So that'll be the starting position for him there. We want to end back in this position again. So let's go to our frame number 17. We'll hit F6 or insert a keyframe here. So that'll copy that to there. Again, go to our back arm, choose frame number 17 and insert another keyframe there, F6. So as it moves, it'll go from this position back to this position. There to there. Okay, the next thing, rather than doing each individual position, let's just go to the second contact, to this stage right here, where all we're doing is swapping out the position of the arms. <coughs> I'm going to move my keyframe to frame number 9, which is right here. 
with frame 9 selected, we'll choose our front arm first, so I'll choose the layer, and with the second contact, the shoulders are back some, so I'm going to use my arrow keys. Let's move it back just a bit. Then I can click on the hand. Let's swap it around. Let's go this way. Let's bend it in. And I'm kind of mimicking that position for the back arm. It doesn't have to be perfect. As a matter of fact, I may bring it down just a little bit. In some. Takes a little bit of practice, but you'll get used to the basic look and feel. So with the back, or excuse me, the front arm sticking backwards, let's choose the back arm now. I'm going to move it forward by nudging it so I can see it. And to make it a little easier to select, I'm going to turn off the body. Let's click on the hand and bring it forward. Bend it at the elbow. Turn our body back on now so we can see it. And that's a good forward body position. So now if I was to play it, notice what we got now. Oh, yeah, it's pretty good. Back and forth. All it's doing is swinging kind of naturally back and forth for our body position. Going from this position, and it's tweening itself to the second position, then tweening itself back to this position. Now it's off by a little bit because the movement of the body is not matching the arms and this is where we'll go back and readjust those. So I'm back to frame number one. Let's go to frame number three and we'll work on the recoil position for the arm. Choose the front arm. Obviously I need to move it down some into position. Remember we moved it down two shift spaces. And I'm going to move it in a little bit. Let's do the same for the back arm. Let's move it down. One, two. And that back arm, we actually want it to go back a little bit farther. So maybe it'll start by swinging back some. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's move to frame number five. Moving back to the front arm. Seems to be in a pretty good position. It's starting to move back. I'm going to move it down just one. I'll have it. I'm looking at the passing position now. So by here, it should be down on a more neutral position. That looks pretty good. Let's choose the back arm. Back arm is almost not visible, so we can actually keep it right where it is. I will move it down into position for there. Now let's get the high point. Move over to frame number seven. Choose our front arm. We'll move it up just a little bit. It's already in a pretty good position. And actually, the back arm is not too bad by itself. So choose the back arm, hold down shift. I'm going to move it up so we can see him. And then finally, here. So now his shoulders are meet, matching the movement of his body. Keep going with it. So let's go to frame number 11. He's moving back down. Choose the front arm. In this case, we're looking at the second recoil. So the front arm needs to move down by two. We'll have it move back some. Maybe bend the arm a little more. Choose the back arm. Move it down. We'll move it up and in a little bit more. That looks good. Move over to frame number 13. This is going to be the passing position, so it should be down. By this one, the front arm looks pretty good. Maybe we'll have it go down a little bit more. The back arm should be moving a little faster, so down here. move to frame number 15 and this will be the front arm needs to move up one two so it looks like this is pretty good position this is the high post and the back arm we'll move it up two let's move it out a little bit more right about there and finally it goes back to its original frame so let's play this 
we'll loop it over and over again. Not bad. Now he's actually doing his own little walking sequence. If you want, you could get rid of this 18th frame. So I'm going to select that, Shift 7. It'll allow it to walk back and forth just like this. And so as we move forward, you can see all the different keyframes for the tweening between the frame structure, the arm structure. The computer is doing all of the work to do that kind of movement. Now that we've got the arms done, let's go back and focus on doing the legs. Got my recoil, my contact structure, excuse me. <clears throat> we'll turn on visibility for the legs. And the first one, we'll choose the front leg. Make sure it's kind of back of the hip structure. We'll kind of bend him backwards. He's just starting to bend his knee, so we won't worry too much about bending it just enough. It's really the other leg that's starting to take on the pressure, and so we'll in that front leg forward a little bit. So that would be the starting position. We want it to end again in this position. So let's go all the way to frame number 17. Choose F6 for both the front leg and the back leg. This will give the same starting position and ending position. Then we'll move, let's turn off our looping. We'll move our line back to the middle position Remember, we want to work on the second contact next. Whoops, drop the glasses. With frame number nine selected, let's swap up the feet. So we'll choose the front leg. In this case, I've got the layer selected. Use your arrow keys to nudge the hip forward just a little bit. We'll swing it going this way. Straighten out his kneecap. He's just about to step down. Choose the back leg. Use your arrow keys to nudge it backwards just a little bit. And then we'll swing it back. Barely bend the knee. And start picking up that one. So that'll be the second one. So if we wanted to look at those, you can see the passing of both of those. Pretty good. Now what we need to do is to make sure as the body is moving up and down that the hip joints and the knee joints match the, the movement of the body. Go back to frame number one. Let's move over to frame number three. The body is moved down to, so we want to make sure the hip also moves down to and the knee joint moves in as well. So I'm looking at the second one, the recoil. It's got a pretty good bend to the knee. So I'm going to select the knee, bend it up right about there. I need to move the hip down, so I'm going to select the front leg layer so it gets everything. Hold down shift, go down one, two, and now it's into position. You can actually pick it up a little bit more. Let's choose the back leg. The back leg needs to have a lot more bend to the knee. Again, you can select the layer itself, it gets all of them. Hold down shift, one, two, and this one should really be planting itself pretty firmly into the, the ground. So we'll say that right there is where it should be. So that's the recoil. Let's move frame over one, two. It's starting to pick itself back up. And if you need to turn off the arm so you can see the structure of it, you can do that now. Oops. Turn off the back arm. And in our case, the the passing leg, this front leg, needs to be picked up and forward a good bit more. The body's starting to move up, so let's choose the front leg and we'll move it up by a little bit. Move it in. This back leg is starting to pick up a little bit more weight, so we'll straighten it out. Move it a little bit behind. Let's actually move this one forward a little bit. We'll choose the back leg, move it up into position. There's that. So mimicking that passing movement as they're passing between each other. You can turn the arms back on. Let's move over to frame number seven. 
This is the high point. So the high point, that back leg should be nice and straight, just like that. Oops, excuse the foot. It's pushing off on that foot. This knee or the front leg will move it up just one. And it's got the highest point as it gets right here, as it moves into the contact of this one. Now we're at this particular stage. So here it is. Pretty good. Now let's actually animate the second pass to it. Moving on to frame number 11, I'm looking at this recoil state, just the legs. So this front leg is starting to bend. Not that way. Let's bend it a little bit more this way. This back leg is taking off the pressure, so it's being picked up kind of seeing it at its highest. Let's move over to frame number 13. We're looking at the passing state, so they're both relatively close to each other. That one's pretty good. We'll let that, we'll straighten that leg out. We'll bend this knee in just a little bit more. Can't really see it because you got the arm in the way. We'll move on to frame 15 which is the high point right here. So this front leg actually needs to be moved up a little bit. We'll straighten it out. It's getting the full contact down there. This back leg, we'll move it up a little bit. It reaches the highest point, but it goes into the next position here. And with that, I think we're done. Let's turn on looping and see what it looks like to loop out this whole sequence. Now he's got some good movement for our entire robot. He's moving up and down. His arms are swaying back and forth. And I like the way it looks. Let's get rid of our walking sequence layer. Clicking on it, click trash. We'll zoom back out. This is a good point to save whatever you're working on. And since we're still working in edit mode, let's choose scene number one, and it goes back to our blank scene. Now that I've got a walking sequence created, I can drag him onto my stage, and we can see what he looks like as he's walking. Now here's the fun part. If I wanted to test this movie, I can go up to Control, down to Test, and we can see him kind of just walking in place right here. Pretty cool. If I wanted him to walk across the screen, since he's a movie clip, I can give him a starting position here. We can go up to our timeline. Let's say in 40 frames, we want him to be on the other side of the screen. We could choose frame number one. I'll turn off my looping. Frame number one, and we'll insert a motion tween excuse me, not a motion tween, a classic tween, and we can have him move from one side to the other. Now in the editor mode, it won't animate our sequence. We have to go to control and test to see what it looks like as he's walking across our page. Okay, and if I stop it by hitting that, he'll just stop movement, but he'll still move himself, which is kind of cute in itself. Okay, with that done, the final thing we, you need to do is to create a sequence of him walking, jumping, and also waiting. And I'll leave it up to you how you want to animate your character jumping into the air. But some things to think about is maybe he starts in a squatting position and then jumps up and then falls back down. And as he's waiting, maybe he's moving back and forth. You've already got the good guy parts created, so make a duplication of the good guy AI turn it into a movie clip, and call this new movie clip jumping, and then do the same thing for a waiting movie clip. We'll duplicate it, call it waiting, and the type will be a movie clip for that. And then go through the same process that we did for walking in order to create a jumping and kind of a uh, idling, moving back and forth, doing something uh, besides walking or jumping. The last thing we're going to do is to add a background to make it look like he's walking through
through a sequence over and over again without actually having to walk across the screen. And to do this, we're going to need our background layer to create a parallax effect. 